Isabel. Hello, Tom. Thank you for coming. I wasn't going to. Let me tell you straight out that there is nothing in this world, nothing, that I want to see less at this moment than anything or anyone from the location. But you said in your note that it was urgent, so here I am. If you've got something to say, I'll listen. Are you in a hurry? I haven't got to be somewhere else, if that's what you mean. But if you're asking because it looks as if I would like to run away from here, from you very fast, and the answer is yes. But don't worry, I'll be able to control that urge as long as you need to say what you want to. I just wanted to say goodbye. Again? What do you mean? You've already done that, Tommy. Maybe you didn't use that word, but you turned your back on me and walked out of my life the last afternoon, the three of us. How long ago was that? Three weeks, I think. So why do you want to do it again? Wasn't the last time good enough? It was so dramatic, Tommy. I wanted to see you because I'm leaving the town. I'm going away for good. Oh, I see. This is meant to be a sad goodbye, is it? I'm sorry if I'm hurting your feelings, but I thought you wanted to talk to me today because of recent events in our little community. Unrest-related. I think that's the phrase they use. Yes, here it is. Unrest-related incident in which, according to witnesses, the defenseless teacher was attacked by a group of blacks who struck him over the head with an iron rod before setting him on fire. Stop it, Isabel. Tommy, I wish I could. I have tried everything, but nothing helps. It just keeps going around and around inside my head. I've tried crying. I've tried praying. I've even tried confrontation. The day after it happened, I tried to get into the location. I wanted to find the witnesses who had reported it so accurately and ask them, why didn't you stop me? The police roadblock at the entrance and they wouldn't let me in. I thought I was crazy or something and escorted me back into the arms of two not very frightened parents. There is nothing wrong with me. All I need is someone to tell me why he was killed. What madness could drive those people to kill a man who had devoted his whole life to helping them? He was such a good man. He was one of the most beautiful human beings I have ever known. And his death is the ugliest thing I have ever known. He was an informer, Isabel. Somehow or the other, someone discovered, discovered that Mr. M was an informer. You mean that list of pupils taking part in the boycott? You call that informing? No, it was worse than that. He went to the police and gave them the names and addresses of our political action committee. They have all been arrested and are now in detention. Mr. M did that? Yes. How believe It's true, Isabel. No! No, what proof do you have? His own words. He told me so himself. I didn't believe it either when he was first accused when well, he was first accused, but the last time I saw him, he said that it was true. He had been to the police. Mr. M. Police spy. For how long? No, it wasn't like that. He wasn't paid anything. He went to the police just at one time. He said he felt it was his duty. What do you mean? The boycott, the strikes, the arson, you know he didn't agree with any of that, but at the same time, he was very confused about it all. I think he wished he had never done it. So he went to the police just once? Yes. As a matter of conscience? Yes. You don't murder a man for that, and it doesn't make him an informer. Then what do you call someone who gives information to the police? No, you know what that word really means, the kind of person it suggests. He went to the police because he thought he was doing the right thing. Like I said, you don't murder a man for that. 
Be careful, Isabel. Of what? The words you use. Which one don't you like? Murder? What? What do you want me to call it? An unrest-related incident? If you are going to call him an informant, then I'm going to call his death murder. It was an act of self-defense. By who? The people. What? A mad mob attacks one unarmed defenseless man and you say Stop that? it, Isabel. You just keep quiet now and listen to me. You're always talking about how you want to understand us and what it means to be black. Well, if you do, listen to me carefully now. I don't call it murder and I don't call the people, the people who did it a mad mob. And yes, I do expect you, you to see it as an act of self-defense. Listen to me. Blind and stupid, but still self-defense. He betrayed us in our, in our fight for freedom. Five men are now in detention because of Mr. M's visit to the police station. There have been other arrests and there will be more. Why do you think I'm running away? Try to understand, Isabel. Try to imagine what it's like to be a black person choking inside with rage, bitterness, and frustration. And then to discover that one of your own kind is a traitor. Has betrayed you to those responsible for the misery and suffering of your own family, of your people. What would you do? Remember, there's no court or magistrate that you can drag him to and demand he be tried for that crime. There's no justice in this country for black people other than what we make for ourselves. When you judge us for what happened outside of the school four days ago, just remember that you carry a share of the responsibility for it. It is your laws that have made simple, decent black people so desperate that they turn to mad mobs. Say it, Isabel. No. This is your last chance. You once challenged me to be honest with you. I'm challenging you now. <laughs>